So after this uh, quarantine is over, what are we thinking about doing? I've got about 50 places that I've thought about going. <laughs> yeah, me uh, too, right? Uh, <laughs> and all of them involve self self isolation anyway. So right. I don't know why I can't do them now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. My thing. It just depends on when they lift it, because I'd like for everybody. You know, shoot, we've got multiple places right now to go hunt some turkey down here in Macau or up there where y'all are at and everything. Yeah. To be able to go up there and y'all come down here, able to have some hunts, really, you know. Yeah, yeah for Hudson, sure. Yeah. And Hudson. But, of course, right now, I mean, even if we could, like, the fishing and stuff like that to be able to go do. But if they don't, you know, if it's – the nice thing, the benefit that we do have is that at least y'all season's a lot later than ours is. But that's what kind of stinks yeah. right now because y'all can't hear like tomorrow. Ours opens hunt. up, what, tomorrow? Yeah. Two weeks? Tomorrow? Tomorrow. It opens up here tomorrow. Or two weeks. No, it opens up here tomorrow and it goes to May 6th. Yeah. Uh, yeah. See, we open April 6th. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We've been. I was waiting, 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 and I said, "Daddy, when is it gonna be turkey hunt? Daddy, when is it gonna be turkey hunt? Daddy, when is it gonna be turkey hunt?" <laughs> we made a calendar and everything, a countdown, ready to go turkey. <laughs> and then we lost it, and then we lost it. He lost your calendar. That goes. Yep. Yeah. Sounds like you got a good hunting buddy there, Dylan. I do. He. Keeps me on my toes for sure. Yeah. Yep. He tells me, now he tells me that I'm being too loud or I'm moving too much already on the second hunt. <laughs> um, the, like, the first hunt, it was really funny. And there was that air thing. The windicator? Yeah, the windicator. And then I pushed it and then I said, who did shoot it? <laughs> you like, did you like playing with that windicator? Yeah. Yeah, you get that from your dad. Yeah. Good yep. <laughs> but no, I think, yeah. The, uh, I think that uh, the turkey hunting, if everything gets back to normal, and because, man, that thing. About it. The later it gets in the season down here, the more I don't want to go just because snakes are out. You know? Oh, yeah. He, he, just, he killed a copperhead this morning. No kidding? Yep. yep. And so I, I, I mean, I know, I mean, I've seen a few, but I haven't seen any copperheads yet, but that's just a matter of time. But they're, they're starting to really, really move right now. And I dang sure don't want to be posting up on the tree. And have one slither in between my legs. That wouldn't be a good deal. No. I was wanting y'all to just because baseball season. Well, that's what we talked about was getting you down here to be able to go get yeah. on one. I had it marked in my calendar too. I, I was I planned on coming down there, but uh, you know, and all this yeah. stuff. But I was really looking forward to. It. I. I uh, like I said, I've never, I sh I've shot, uh, I've shot at a couple with my bow, but I've never legitimately been turkey hunting. I don't think like tur hunting for them. So, uh, well, I feel like it's about as close as you can yeah. get elk hunting. That's what I've heard. And see, I never, I, that never would even cross my mind. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Of course, the terrain's a heck of a lot easier to maneuver through <laughs> down here at least yeah i've got i've got uh well i've been i, I was wanting to turkey hunt i i was wanting to go to uh buffalo river that's kind of been on my mind uh, over in Arkansas, float and catch yep. small mouth. And uh, I want to take it. I want to pull the camper up to Colorado, uh, but I don't even know if they'll let let you in. 
I don't even know. Can you even go out of state right now? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't, I don't, think I don't know if any other state parks are open. Texas closed theirs down last week, so that's why everybody's been just flooding Lake Texas or North Side, Lake Murray. I guess, and then yeah. um, Lake Murray, Mud Buckles, everything like that had just been swamped this last week because apparently like, I didn't know we went out there went just to go hiking around with the boys yesterday morning and uh, you know I mean there was there was a lot of people there but nothing like 4th of July or something like that you know but yeah that's what we talked about the same thing is that it'd be nice to be able to take a camper out and just go go out there for the next couple of weeks and everything while everything hopefully slows down with all the chaos yeah I'd, I would I really would like to go to Buffalo River up there in Arkansas, try that out as soon as this stuff's out of here and gone where we can go do it and venture out and try some new cool things. Mm -hmm. We usually go to the White River too this time of year, uh, and uh, it's usually pretty fun. Usually bring a flat bottom boat. Yeah. And we'll uh, float down the river and then drive back up and uh, fish the brown trout. Or whatever trout bites, but uh, there's some there's some huge trout there. Really? And, uh, yeah, and it's fun because I mean that camp that we usually camp there at the White River, uh, is it White River State Park, uh, below Bull Shoals Dam. It's it's probably the nicest state park I've ever been to. I mean, really? Like just the bathrooms. I mean, the the, the, the grass is always freshly cut. I mean, it's it's crazy, but uh, you can rent a boat there at the dam. It's pretty cool, especially when you get some buddies or something, you know, and it's not hard fishing. You basically just float down and as far as you want to go down, and then you motor back up and then do it again. Float back and you do it again. And it's, it's, it's fun. Yeah, that, that, that we're going to, we're going to go for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So Dylan was looking at his pack since this quarantine stuff's going on. Dylan's yeah, this, probably been been good. this has not been good for me at all when it comes to <laughs> elk hunting and stuff like that. And <laughs> good you know, our elk is five on the list for this year. You know, we go every other year or whatever, so this is a kind of our off year. But with this whole thing going on and being kind of locked, not inside, but, you know, from going anywhere else, outside of here i spent a lot of time in the shop and uh are you going inside bud okay and um of course right you know i've got all my little all my elk hunting stuff so i was like i knew on my list i wanted to kind of go through there and see if there's any space to shed or uh wait and i know that last time that we went last year there's a few things i marked on there and i said i'm gonna take a look at that so I've been going through that stuff. I bet I've gone through it, shoot, I don't know, probably four or five times. But by doing that, I've shed, so far I've been able to shed just under four pounds of weight. Which is – And that's I mean, that's not that's not food or anything like that. But – and I, uh, I actually was looking at and went through a few of the old pictures and stuff that we had. And I've got – Nick, I've got a picture of my pack – the first year that we all went to uh, uh, up near Aspen, right? And that pack, I remember, weighed either 64 or 68 pounds. It was, I, I think it was 64 it was pounds. <laughs> and we wonder and why we about died. I yeah. remember taking well, it. When, you know, and you watch, these, and you watch these videos or whatever, and people – yeah, they, they open up, it's like, oh, they're walking for 15 miles, and then now we're starting to make camp. It's like, we really did. We walked 14 <laughs> miles the first day with 68-pound pack or 64-pound pack. And, and, and ended right back where we started. Exactly. <laughs> One yeah. man down and back where we started. Hey, do y'all remember walking back down, and we was – I mean, we thought we were going to die, and we said we were starving to death, and it was like 8.30. And we said, we're going to ask them, we're going to eat. We walked in like 10 minutes before they closed, and we ordered the three biggest steaks they had on the menu. Yeah. I'll tell you what surprised me most about that whole entire trip is that 
Now, we shoved about, I don't know, probably six Advil or a leave or something like that. Oh, Not half a bottle. I, I didn't, you know, I was surprised how well we got around, well, me and Nick, we got around the next day. Because you were pretty much spent after that. Like, your hip or knee or something yeah, was gone. my knee. Yeah. You made a cane on the way out. Yeah, yeah. We had to. I know. And they were going to have to come pick me up in the helicopter. I remember, I, I remember getting back after that first day, and we're like, we started just pulling stuff out of our pack. Nope, don't need that. Nope, <laughs> don't. I remember having that. I had that 38, that old, old 38 special uh, revolver that weighed about 10 pounds that I was carrying around. I don't know why, but I carried that little pistol, and we got back. I was like, nope, that's staying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were pulling everything that we <laughs> could imagine out of there. But yeah. you know, from know from day. from that from that time there to from last year, like unbelievable. Like I think our our packs weighed what about forty four pounds, Dylan. Uh, with food and everything. Yeah, and our bow. That was like forty six pounds, wasn't it? Yeah, wow. my my pack with everything last year, and you got to think, man. I, you know, we weren't planning on ever coming back to the truck unless we killed one. Yeah, and we were going to go for five five nights, mm -hmm. and my pack with my food. I can't remember if I weighed my bow with it or not. I probably didn't, but my pack with my food was thirty eight pounds, and so my bow is probably I don't know eight maybe, which is about half of what we did at, in Aspen. Well, the nice thing about it that's different is that once we finally got to camp, uh, you know, we were able to locate elk pretty close within within two miles of where we were camped at so oh yeah so we, we pretty much took all of our camping stuff jet bulls sleeping bag tent all that stuff and left it there so our my day pack was with the pack weight included my, my pack itself was probably like six and a half pounds but with everything in it you know i was pushing like 18 pounds that's what i was running up and down the mountains with was 18 pounds you know yeah yeah and now like I said, I was able to shed four pounds off of it, roughly. My pack right now would weigh, I don't know, I'll I, I tell you how bad it is. I've got it right here. So, this is my gear by the ounce, okay? <laughs> this is my clothing, and this is my gear by the pounds, okay? So, the bigger things or whatever. And, I mean, it, it comes down to where... It's got how many pounds, how many ounces that correlates to, and what the thing is. And then if you see a circle, that's what I've actually replaced it with. So, like this one weighed, well, I don't know what it says, uh, like 12.8 pounds for the jet boil. I got a pocket rocket and it weighs 2.6 ounces, right? Yeah. But with everything, um, all my gear without my sleeping bag. Or my pack weight, six pounds, is eight point eight pounds, and wow. that, that's no food, no water, and no sleeping bag. But that's all your 8. gear. Eight point eight pounds. My pack will weigh six and a half. So I'm pushing, I'm pushing fourteen, fifteen pounds, and that that that's everything. So like once I get there and unload everything, I'm at six pounds. So because the only thing that weighs anything without my sleeping bag is my tent, and with the it's a Nemo whatever ultralight 2p yeah so i mean it weighs like two and a half pounds maybe but if free i never thought that i would actually be into like the ounces and stuff but i don't know if it's just because i'm bored out of my mind or it's an obsession a little bit but i do all the gear reviews and it's not like oh there's a new thing to go check it out and see it but like even like the hay twine People don't do that. I don't no, think. No. Now, no. I was packing out and stuff like that when I was up in Colorado, that we did, but we had wall tents. You know, it's like, yeah. it wasn't like ultralight packing thing. It was just that what was available because we had all the resources to use. But instead of using paracord, I mean, because that stuff will, I mean, not like it's heavy, but if you compare it to hay twine, it's, it's night and day difference on the weight of it. Yeah, yeah. So I just use k -Pon. And you can I, use it for I, everything. I, have, I, have yeah. everything. I mean, we used it I mean, for... I, I, so I used to take a, 
um, like two extra um, like shoelaces. You know, I'd have my pack or whatever, just in case one of my shoelaces broke on my boot or something. I don't take that anymore. All I'll take is just that hay twine. Uh, we use it to put the tarps up. We used to hang the quarters up last year, the elk. Everything. Yeah, we use it for everything, and it's light as a feather. I'm ready to go. Ready and to go. it's inexpensive. And you got to think you get a whole deal of paracord. You don't want to cut it. Dude, you know and I, I mean? just like I just went to my shop last weekend to clean it out a little bit, my storage building, yeah. and I found a whole entire roll of hay twine, like a whole big got, roll of hay twine. Yeah. Now, what you don't want to do with hay twine is leave it in the back of your gator and then have your brothers come down and get one of uh, hung on a tree limb. And it's literally stretched across your whole entire property about, you know, oh. right behind your house. Oh, God. <laughs> so was, was that, that was whitetail season last year, wasn't that it? That was last year. That was a couple of days after you killed that monster. Yeah. I was up on the top of the ridge, and Dylan had, Dylan had a whole roll of that hay twine in the back of his gator, and I went up there to pick up my blind. And I guess when I threw my blind in there, just a little bit of a tail come off of that hay twine onto the, onto the ground. And it was good, probably two miles around, you know, all the way around and down. And Dylan was down at camp and I come rolling in and he's shaking his head. And I'm like, what? He goes, dude, you got hay twine hanging out. And it, and we had I to roll. It flowing out the back of it. Just flowing it's out just the back unrolling. of it. It's just unrolling as I drive all the way up to where I got the blind. And that took us about, <laughs> what, an hour and a half to get it all back down the mountain and wound back up? Probably. <laughs> and it, I mean, we didn't even, couldn't even wind it back up. I mean, like, you stuff it in there, but it's just like a, it's like a knot on Christmas vacation, yeah. you know? Yeah. So we ended up just, I think we ended up just burning what was popped out of there. Yeah. Throwing it on the fire, getting rid of it. <laughs> oh. But no, it, that stuff does work really good for instead of the paracord. Because like I said, the pair, once you cut the paracord, you don't want, you know, you, it's not like it's extremely expensive, but it's stuff you got to continue to get. But you get a whole deal of hay twine. And I honestly, like I still got, we strung out all that stuff. And I still have probably three quarters of that roll available. You know, yeah. I've used it for the last two years, three years. Yeah. yeah. And I, st I use it today. It's not... Uh, everyday you back truck it does work good though but no i think like i said without the elk hunt going on this year i don't know depending on all this stuff i think that either way it'd be fun to get everybody together and even if you know because you gotta think between us three that's six tags buck tags that we could get this year right yeah, yeah and I can't, I'm mean, heck, I can't already wait till the season just to see the big, the old big white buck and then the drop time buck. Yeah. To see, see if the old buck made it and see if the drop time buck's still hanging around. Yeah. That's, uh, I know that. Y'all have any cameras? You no, know, really. Last year, I I pulled all mine down. I haven't. I never hung them back up to see if there was anything else out there right now. But yeah, I say that I've got one out there, but it doesn't have a chip in it right now. See, so dude. But my so, only thing is that last year I just had pretty much the one one you know nice buck that we had last year. That was the only thing I really. Uh, there was one tall, narrow buck that was out there, but I think our neighbor ended up killing him. And he was a nice deer. Uh, he's probably what, Casey, probably like a 150? Yeah, like he, yeah, yeah, he's 140 at least. Maybe. Yeah. So, but so besides I, that, those two, you know, there wasn't any like big potential out there. I don't think I've talked to you since you shot that buck, but uh, man, that was a nice, that was a nice buck. I bet you were stoked after showing. Of which one? You cut out on me for a second. Yeah. The last one you shot there? 
Oh yeah. The big one. He was, uh, yeah. What is score? Casey, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I don't. I, I never got him scored. I never. I never had him scored. I think that um, my thought is that he's one seventies, and if pushing it would be like, I think it'd be like one uh, upper upper one seventies. Don't you think, Casey? Yeah, I, I, I think I he'll push think, one. I think he hit one eighty. I think he'll be right at right at close to around one seventy five to one eighty. That's a nice deer. One what to do. It, he's nice. the nicest one that I've ever killed. Yeah, that's uh. He no, was, I guess the other big yeah. one I had was back here, and I killed him. I don't know, three years ago, I guess something like that, and I've. I've I don't know. I've never actually gotten them all scored. You know, usually it's just like I've got a – I try to find the, the big one on the – or whatever and try to hunt them. But Well, and that, that, uh, that's another topic that we – that's another topic for another day. But can y'all see that at does all? Does it really matter what they are? It's a big, I it's can't a big deer. <laughs> I can't see it. Can't see it. That's crazy. I can see but, now. Uh, yeah, it's. I was going to show you that picture well, of Billy. I'm going to go elk hunt the guys. That, that mule deer hunt was really fun this year. It was just different. You know, it was a lot of glassing and driving around. Yeah. But, and it was really fun. Um, but, uh, I'm okay. And, you know, Casey mentioned it earlier about for us, the closest thing we can get, get to an elk hunt around here is like the turkey hunt, you know? Yeah. And to me, like if you've ever, and I not like I'm an expert at all in any of it, but I've only been a handful of times. Now Casey could probably talk to this a lot more than I could, but of, uh, of hog hunting. And the adrenaline rush that you get with hog hunting and put that with the turkey hunting, that's that's like that's the closest thing that I think that we could ever get to without actually going up there and doing it. But man, I don't know. That's and and like um you know, there's a lot of guys that like mule deer is that's that is it. And whenever I worked in Colorado, the guys that actually worked or uh, that were from there, you you asked them like, Hey, what what is on your bucket list? Like what do you want to do? It's like I wanna go hunt a whitetail. Just like you're freaking nuts, you know. I mean, like, yeah. although it's fun, but uh, it's just one of those things. It's just like if you got it available or whatever, then you, of course you, you you know take it for granted or whatever. But um, but man, I think Dude. what run me the most on elk hunt was the first year that I went. So it was the second year that KC and them went, but the first year that I went was in two thousand eight. I know that because I got a picture behind me with it, but in 2008, and I was a sophomore in college, I guess. And whenever I went up there, it was it was it was prime time in Colorado. It was prime time, and I've I think we've only been we counted up like seven times elk hunting now. Yeah, seven. Or and eight. I don't think anything would ever be the same way that it was there. I mean, like it's, they were unreal. You, you go outside and you just holler. You go outside and just scream. And then also just boom, 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 just getting after it. We went outside one evening and just laid on the mountainside like we were coon hunting. You know, it was just dark outside. And we just laid up on the mountain. And you could just hear them all in this valley down there just spotting off, you know. It was nuts. It was. But, and I'll tell you what, the thing about it is that if, if we could go experience that now with what we've learned now, I yeah. think, you know, it would be, we would, we would have a lot more success to go do it. But I mean, just being there and listening to it and all that was awesome. So, so when you were there, like that was your first time, right? And so you look, I bet, like for me, I've been to places like fly fishing and stuff and just hit it right the first time I ever went and thought, 
oh, this is, this is, uh, this is great. You know, it's fun and, oh, yeah. and uh, it's, this is easy and I'm coming back. And then you go back and it's like, wait. Totally well, different. <laughs> oh, dude. Like, where'd they go? No. Here's what happened is that we go to that hunt in 2008 and then we're like, okay, well, you know, that, that was fun. We'll go back again. Went back. Wasn't the same. Right. So then Casey and I were like, we're going to give another shot. Let's go. Where are we going to go? Oh, we're going to backpack in Aspen. So that was our next one. And that sucked. That was, I, I remember on that, I was like, I don't even know if I like this anymore. Like, this is not fun to me. I did not enjoy elk hunting. I really just oh, you got to admit, stand. as soon as we got set up camp on day two, you know, we had that bull bugling, and I thought he was going to come right straight to camp that first morning. Oh, yeah. Casey, you remember pouring coffee? You remember, uh, you, yeah. I think you were sitting there pouring, and, and we were, we were kind of getting late around us because we, I guess we hiked in there the night before. And we were, you know, I kind of had this burn in my mind. You were pouring coffee or water in my canteen, yeah. weren't you, or something? Yeah, I was, I and, was uh, pouring water. I think water, <laughs> and then I was pouring it, and all of a sudden, we heard it, and then, like, it just kept running. Yeah. <laughs> kept running over your cup, you know. <laughs> and then we busted out and got in position, and, man, we got – I mean, it was close, and he was a good bull, too. He was a good bull. I always thought I always thought that was so crazy. We hiked all over that – all over that region there. And the one we didn't hear, that was the only bull that we even heard, wasn't it? That was the only bull we heard. That was, that was all the we only, heard the entire trip. The, the only one, cows one or bulls that we've seen. Was, and it came right into close to our camp. That's and it's crazy. not like it was a hunt. I mean, we saw the bull. Yeah. I mean, he, yeah, was, 80, yeah. he was 80 yards from you guys. Man. Yep. Yeah. That was fun. A lot of fun. And, and then y'all, you know, hey, y'all. To me, it's, it's like a. Go ahead. Do y'all remember? Y'all, do y'all remember when we, when we set up camp? We tried to find a good flat spot, and there ain't no good flat spot around Aspen, Colorado. And uh, we we're whooped. We we're like, man, we need some water. So we, so we walked. We hiked another mile up the canyon to get water. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then the next morning, that's when we had that bull yep. encounter. Yep. And then we're like, okay, after that, after that encounter was over, we start. We went out and we walked like. 30 yards to the to the east or something of our camp and we found a nice beautiful running stream like 30 yards from camp <laughs> remember what we named it yes yeah. i do remember dipshit creek <laughs> yeah. dylan dylan's got dylan still has that poem i'll tell you what it, it, I've got the poem. Yeah, I've got the poem right here. I can read it to you. The, uh, but what's funny is that you think about that hunt and that creek that we ran into. What, is, what we got going over here? <laughs> hey! That little yeah, Dale, Dale Brisby going on over there, it looks like. What, what did you say? Did you teach him that, Dylan? Did you teach him that, Dylan? Yeah. Hey, he came in from where Whit was at. I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> What's your mama doing in there? Oh, uh, but you think about uh, <laughs> like Onyx maps now. Oh. If we had that then, you know what I mean? Night and day difference. See, buddy. Dude, when we figured out Onyx map, it like changed our entire oh. hunt scheme 100%. Oh. That I don't see how people yep. did it. Like on that mule deer hunt, yep, there was so did. much. There was so much public and private, and it was just, and you know, I went with my dad and Dee and uh, Steve, and you know, they're, they're, they've they been going up there for 30, 40 years, whatever, you know, since they were kids, and uh, you know, they none of them had Onyx Map. I don't even know, I'm not sure if they've even heard of it. And so at the beginning of the trip, you know, I was constantly on my phone checking boundaries. Yeah. Because honestly, that was my tactic. All the, 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 the big mule deer I saw were right on the property, right on the edge. So that's that was kind of my tactic. I was like, well, that's where all the mule deer are. They're on private. I'm going to try to find, 
get up next to private, you know? Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, they were kind of, they were kind of poking fun at me at first. <laughs> I think towards the end, they were like, that on X is pretty nice. In fact, I think yeah. next to the last day, my dad called me. The next last day, my dad called me, and I didn't answer because I was actually – no, it was the last day is when I shot that small mule deer. And uh, he called me, but I didn't answer. And, but he called me to ask me to tell me where he was at and if it was close to private or public because they were looking at <laughs> the mule deer. And he, he didn't know. Yeah. So he yeah. didn't see it. <laughs> Yeah, dude, I'm but, telling you man, that that Onyx is unbelievable. I mean, like it's unreal, and especially you know, I mean, like you can get it, you know, right here where you have service. But when, once you go out of service, and you're able to download that map, and you go out of service, and you can turn your phone into yeah. airplane mode, and you can, I mean, and it, <laughs> it's awesome. I remember when me and Dylan went up to right north of Chama two years ago, and I got turned around like crazy. We had Onyx maps, and Dylan's like, no, hey, Onyx maps. Have, he thinks he's pretty good about, like, direction, sense of direction. But he was done. Like, I, we dude, I, I was so turned around, and thank God for Onyx maps, because, I, I, matter of fact, I was kind of like, no, nah, that's wrong. That's no way. There's no way. And we did my time. We did my little area probably about 15, 20 minutes. Finally, I said, let's go. So we started walking, and sure enough, I mean, after that little trip, I mean, I was completely, I mean, it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Well, and then, I don't know, a couple of trips ago or whatever, but going up back up to North Colorado, I was able to go up there on a scouting trip by myself for about three days. And so I had the Onyx maps. And that's the thing is like, if I didn't have that, I was a little bit familiar with the area, but I, you know, it was, I guess it's probably eight years since I've actually been to that location. And so going back up there, I'm, I have an idea, but I'm still not comfortable like cruising around on foot by myself for, for three or four days. But I had the Onyx. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm just going to do my tracks and take off. I mean, I, I'd catch myself just bushwhacking off the trail because I had the confidence that I just go on here and done, yeah. you know? And, yeah. And of course you can enable the, the, whatever the direction to be able to move with your phone now and you can click it and it shows you like the red beacon as far as which way your phone's actually facing, which is unreal. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, we used it yesterday at the lake, knew the trail, knew where we were at, but I was like, well, which way, you know, just to get it back out and see what it's like. And I use it for, even when we go to, well, not now, but like to stadium events, parking lots, yeah. airports, I'll put it on like, here's the dot where my truck's at and I'll do the tracks in. Then I, when I get back or whatever, it's just, I mean, it takes me right out there. It's awesome. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I mean, I use it all the time. Even now uh, with like the cattle, we'll have cattle and, and I want to say, okay, well, I've got a, uh, if one of them goes on the other side of the fence, I can look it up and see who owns that property. And yeah. I'll tell you what I used it for this, there. this last summer. Uh, I used it to mark, you know, where when we cut hay every year and we bell hay, you know, I've got some spots out here that yeah. that are pretty low. And if I get down in them, I'm either going to turn the tractor over or get stuck. And so we don't ever mow them. But when the grass is all the same height, you don't know exactly where them are at. So last summer I got on Onyx and I just did my tracks around the entire edge of that. So like this summer, yeah. I'll just put that Onyx in my tractor and just do the same tracks and then I ain't got to worry about falling off in no hole. You know, yeah, it's right. that good. It is that good. Yep. Well, it does. Yep. Well, I, I literally used it two days ago. We were uh, looking at a piece of property and was trying to get a survey as far as where the property line was at, who owned the driveway, right? Or the, the, the little access road. I was able to get on there and I could literally pinpoint and be like, this right here is the corner, you know? And I mean, it's, yeah. I, I trust it. It's things accurate. It's pretty awesome. It's probably pretty it's awesome probably tool. the best hunting tool besides your bow. You know what I mean? I, or your gun. I, I agree. 100%. That's what everybody, you know, I mean, you know, I don't know if it's probably a different degree of, of tool or application or whatever, but you look up a bunch of the videos and stuff. And what I've looked at is like, what's the most important tool you have in your pack besides your weapon, of course. It was like, 
optics, optics, optics. Mine, Onyx maps. Like, Onyx I don't map. care. I can see a bull or a, a elk or a deer a mile away and make the trip because I at least because if I, if I glass one and I have to have the optics to glass it and it's a mile away, okay, that's great. That sucker's a mile away, but I have no idea. There's no trail that leads to it. No yeah. trail. No. And now what are you going to do? You can GPS it, but then you're going to bushwhack your way through half of it trying to find a way to the, you know, instead of saying this is where it's at and straight line as a crow flies, the Onyx dude, seeing the topo and the satellite change and all that stuff is awesome. It, it, I was surprised at how accurate it was. You know, when we were when uh, on that mule deer hunt, um, the, uh, you know, the deer, we kind of hit it at a bad, I say a bad time. I mean, the weather was so warm. We were out there in t-shirts. And the reason we went third season is we thought maybe there would be snow and it'd push them down. Well, they went up into the timber. And, uh, but, so, you know, we found this sliver of private, private land. Like, I found this sliver that was surrounded by private <clears throat> on three sides, but it was public. There was this block of public, but you had to hike to kind of get to it. So it's not like you could, just hit it from the road well right. the way the wind was and everything what was cool about it is the next morning we went on the other side of the mountain I and I had a pin dropped and we just got we just you know in the dark I would have never been able to get there and I just followed on X maps right to the ridge and at, 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 at daylight boom I'm there yeah, you know, as those deer coming from, you know, traveling across the public, you know, and I would have never been able to, uh, you know, would have never been able to know even that that was prob. I would have never even known that that was probably public, and then I right. would have never been able to get there just in the dark with a, you know, just oh, yeah. not, you know, and it just took me right there, right on top of the glassing ridge and daybreak, and it was great. Yeah. I, it's a pretty awesome tool for sure. It kind of makes sure. me wonder, wonder, like, man, you know. Well, and one, and one time we were sitting there glassing, and I was like, well, I'll pull up. And I knew that all of it was national, forest, and public. But I just pulled up my Onyx just kind of while, while I was glassing there. And I got to look, and, and, and about 400 yards, 400 yards in front of me that I was glassing, there was a sliver of private. Now, how would you have, I mean, like a, just out in the middle of a national, like public, just a sliver of private land. And it, how would you have known that? Right. If, if with that on it, you right. know. I don't, I, mean, I don't think you, I mean, you'd have to look at a, a hard map. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then from the hard map, you'd have to figure out where you were yeah. at inside that hard map, you know? You talk about some work now. Yeah. <laughs> to try to. Yeah. Because the last thing, too, is that even, even if you just mentally knew that that was private land, you couldn't hunt it, right? Going in there. Well, <clears throat> what if you end up killing or shooting a deer or whatever it is and it goes onto the private land? Now you've got to contact yeah. that, you know, landowner. Yeah. And with, you know, with, of course, Onyx, you can click it and see the owns the land, contact them and go straight from there. I mean, it's, it's yeah. pretty stinking off. I wish we had it when we were coon hunting as kids. We got lost a lot. Holy <laughs> moly. A lot we, by we, the river. we coon hunted probably at least at least three times a week. Really? Yeah. You go to school the next morning. And go to school the next morning. I didn't but man, I didn't we go coon hunting a lot, but when I did I got lost. <laughs> yeah. We I mean we got lost a lot, but man, we <laughs> We've been we went through a lot of dogs, but we had some good dang dogs, didn't we, Dylan? Yeah, we did. And they were <laughs> unbelievable. And we never went to like competitions, you know what I mean? We never did that, but just the way these dogs were, I'm I, I think we would have been grand champion and everything because that's how good our dogs were, you know. I mean, you had I think Grit, Grit was our good tree dog, and then you had Warrior. The only bad thing about Warrior, when he smelt the coon. He'd run that damn thing for three miles if he had. Ridge runner. He was a yeah. ridge runner. Yeah. I mean, 
three miles, four miles, you know, and there was a lot of times that we didn't take warrior just because of that. Yeah. That's what I always think back then too. I think of like, you know, how many snakes did we step right on top of, or, you know what I mean? Yeah. In the dark, in the creek bottoms and beds and everything. He was with us that one time that we were over there by uh, Joe Burns's place, walking that creek, and I think spreading it was, natter? huh? I remember the spreading ladder. No, this was a copperhead. I remember you were with us because you had your Red Rider BB gun, and I had the twenty-two. And I think oh, Kate, that was that was a spreading ladder. No, I promise that was. Yes, a, it was. That no, was no because. I thought, I thought, I mean, I was, I don't know, six. Yeah, probably. dad shot it, dad shot it in the, in the head like twice with your BB gun. Yeah, no, it was, it was one of those, I think it called spread natters, right? Yeah, but that wasn't, this was yeah, a copperhead. Well, uh, no, dude, I thought it was a king cobra. That <laughs> son of a gun was just, oh. he, he, his old head swelled up. Yeah, he was standing up, dude, stand, I remember because you, I was, dad was behind me. And he said, stop. And when, when someone says stops and you hear your dogs bark and you take a few more steps and then. Well, you turn, you turn your light on. Right. And so. But it was a full moon. I remember, stop. I remember it was a full moon and, and me and I think it was Cade. Was Cade with us? It was either Cade or Conway. I don't remember. I think it was Cade. And me and Cade were up at front and we were in that dry mm -hmm. creek bed. And then it was you behind us and then dad back behind you. And dad said, stop turn the lights off so we turned the lights off but it's a full moon and you could kind of see in that creek bed well the reason he said stop is because he seen that snake up there and he knew i was deathly afraid of a damn snake and so we turned the lights off well me and kate just kind of we all just kind of kept walking a little bit and that's when dad hollered snake and i dropped your i dropped the 22 and i took off running back and when we shined the light that 22 was laying right over top of that snake wasn't it yeah, I mean, I remember Dad said stop. We took a couple more steps. Y'all are in front of me. And next thing I know is he grabbed my shoulder and just pulled me back and said stop. And he had flashlight or spotlight or something. He shined it down that snake. And when he did, he was at your foot. And you jumped back and you dropped the gun literally right on top of the snake, like <laughs> laying on top of it. Goodness. And, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a second maybe. And I always carried my Red Rider BB gun. And dad took it, popped a couple of shots in his head, and he was done. Died right there. And what's crazy is, you know, like, as much as deathly afraid of I am of snakes, like, you'd think I wouldn't be very afraid of them since we went coon hunting three or four times a week growing up. And, and these places that we did go coon hunting was Copperhead Alley, you know, like Papa Jim's down there, you know, where in there's the Copperheads everywhere. But... I guess I don't know if I was just young and dumb and didn't care, but it, it, it's like if you didn't look for them, you didn't see them. You know, telling how many I stepped didn't over. Or, them, they were there. That's yeah. the thing. We didn't. It, yeah, I think the worst thing that I'd get into every single time was like, like poison ivy. Just yeah. Highly allergic to poison ivy. You're not. I no. was, and I would get covered in it. And I remember we'd get a couple cocoons or whatever. I'd have that coon on my shoulder because I'm, you know, Daniel Boone going down through there and those suckers were covered in poison ivy and I'd have poison ivy from my face from his tail all of me, all over me. It was all over me. <laughs> and uh, every time, but no, I mean, if that was the worst of it, it was su always surprised me because now I was thinking like, you know, taking Hudson, like. <laughs> I know, right? No way I can, I'll take him I know, there. right? And then okay, dad, hear dad, dad's like, oh, come on, let's go, boys. And we'd load up in a hurry. Yeah, it didn't matter. It's changed. It's crazy. It has, for sure. For sure. Crazy. Anyways, all right, guys. All right, man. Fun. See you guys. We'll see you later.